We've been in Egypt for almost 54 years. West Nile Delta is a very important pillar to underpin another 50 years for us in Egypt for the future. Egypt now imports energy. West Nile Delta will produce 25% of what Egypt produces now. So it's efficient, cheap energy at the time where the demand for energy is growing in the country. Because of the uniqueness, we agreed with the government that it requires a different operational setup. So this will be the first concession in Egypt that will be operated by BP versus using a joint venture. It's a development of five subsea fields tied back to the shore at the Edku gas hub. Uh, which is just about 85 kilometres east of Alexandria. The development aims to meet Egypt's critical gas demand, uh, to put gas into the domestic grid, and most importantly, get new gas on before the peak demand is summer 2017. In, in building the project, we're using the, the best of Egyptian capability with the best of BP's global capability. We're leading it through our global projects organisation. We're really making big improvements around efficiency as well as safety. And that means you know, better cost, better cycle time, and better reliability. We've seen costs come down by 30%. West Nile Delta is unique because of its concept. Uh, this project actually consists of two main projects. One on the fast track is Tours Libra, and the other one is actually uh, Giza Fayum Raven. Uh, after we finish the two projects, actually, this will be considered the biggest facilities in the Mediterranean. On Torres Libra, we are on track for a 23-month execute from the day the agreements were signed to going into production. The Torres Libra fields are deep water developments, nine wells which are tied back to two manifolds, one on each field, and then those in turn are connected both to the CP1 platform which provides the power and control via umbilicals and the pipeline system which then goes and joins the Brulis existing export system. So the subsea insulation uh, infrastructure has been installed by six uh, main construction vessels supported by tugs, barges etc given a full fleet of 22 marine units. The time scale was hugely ambitious, 12 months from contract award to the first vessel in field. We've achieved that um, safely. The most complex part of the Brownfield scope is onshore where we've got over 60 tines to complete, several hundred metres of pipe to route through a live plant and a total plant shutdown which has been completed successfully. So the Taurus Libra project is a very fast track project and as a result we had to find a new way of working with our contractor, Subsea 7. We actually took a step back and trusted them to deliver their scope and we provided oversight to make sure that they were keeping to the plan. One of the keys to the success to uh, Torres Libre has been the, the performance of uh, global subsea systems. They're using standard designs and, and they can deliver much faster now because they are very much integrated. They've done three big structures from Madia, Petrojet Yard in Egypt. We are currently in the Madia fabrication yard, fabricating three manifolds and the pipeline structures for the Torres Libra project. There is around 2,000 workers and about 99% are nationals. We have achieved 2 million hours without any lost time injuries and we are really in line with the quality contractual requirements, so it really feels great. We're also executing Giza Fayum Raven in parallel at the same time. The Giza Fayum Raven deepwater scope includes about 350 kilometers of pipelines, an additional three manifolds, and four subsea centers, along with uh, 12 additional wells. We go up to a water depth of over 650 meters, and it will be laid from deep water to the shallow water and then ultimately to the landfall. The 2017 landfall scope is uh to construct a 500 meter long cover dam. This will enable us to pull the three GFR pipelines. Um, as part of our commitments to, uh, to Egypt, we will have to reinstate the beach to its original condition after we've completed the work. Well, the onshore facilities take the, the fluids from the, uh, the offshore development. They come into the former Rosetta plant, which will be renamed Giza Fayou. We worked very, very closely with Rospetco to understand the scope of what we might need to do to this facility to make it fit for the Giza Fayoum service and for the next 15 years. There was a lot of very good teamwork which enabled us to successfully complete the handover in July. We've had to work very closely with the JV to apply the best lessons from GPO, but also leverage the JV's experience of extensive work in the basin. We've showed we can work through complex situations, be very open-minded about how we do business. Next door to Giza Fayoun, we'll be building a new plant called Raven. We're really well set up, we have over 2,000 people every day on that site through our key contractors, Bechtel, Petrojet, and there's great energy in the team. Safety is our number one priority. We're using three key parts of this. 
Site safety leaders at each of our sites setting the tone from the top, using readiness reviews to make sure we're planning and we're ready to start work safely and efficiently. Also how we work with our contractors. So far, it's going really well, but we will need continued vigilance and attend it every day as we move forward to stay safe. We're on track to deliver two great projects and meet, you know, Egypt's critical gas needs ahead of plan. But the way we're doing West Nile Delta is just as important as what we're doing. One of the objectives of the Nile Delta project is to be a good neighbour to our surrounding communities. That's why we listen to people's needs and actually develop uh, the biggest uh, social investment programme uh, has been ever done on the local communities. We've done some stuff around education, which was important, and microfinancing. Also around health hospitals that needed equipment that was not uh, available for the communities there. The measure that we are looking for, actually, is the people not only accepting us in the neighborhood, but also they need to take the pride of the presence of West Nile Delta in, the, in this area, like they take pride in their local heritage. When you go for a walk on the site and you speak to all the Egyptians working here in that field, they are really proud that they are helping the country, they are securing the natural gas for the upcoming few years in Egypt. So it's a win-win for everyone. We've made the commitment that we're going to bring 800,000 barrels of new oil and gas by 2020. West Nile Delta is about 25% of this. There is more resources there and more exploration potential in this area that we believe will sustain this production for many years to come.